The Sons of Aura are a loyalist chapter of the Adeptus Astartes created during the course of an unknown founding. Little information is known to exist regarding the Sons of Aura due to the fact that much of the chapter's historical records have become lost or otherwise expunged from Imperial records. Despite this, the chapter's warriors have proven themselves to be stalwart and valiant defenders of the Imperium throughout numerous war zones. Not only would the Sons of Aura act as a spearhead during the siege of the Eldari craft world of Alatok, but the chapter would also reinforce Imperial defenders during the course of Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade. Following this latter conflict, the Sons of Aura would take part in the events of the Plague Wars, with the chapter dispatching a trio of battle companies in order to aid the Ultramarines and their successor chapters as they battled against the Death Guard Traitor Legion. One of the few pieces of information which still exists regarding the Sons of Aura, aside from them being officially listed as an Ultramarine successor chapter, is that the chapter holds a special veneration for an ancient hero named Aura, for whom the chapter is named after. Aura, according to the chapter's own historical texts, was an Ultramarine's captain that would rise to prominence in the wake of the Horus Heresy winning many accolades and battle honours across multiple theatres of war, as he led a crusade to defend the eastern fringes from the predatory attentions of Xenos races. After falling in battle, Aura would be entombed upon the world of Comrath along with an ancient relic known as the Scepter of Galaxian, and a great statue would be erected in honour of the warrior's sacrifice. In time, the future Sons of Aura would come to adopt Aura as their spiritual patriarch, although it remains unclear as to whether or not Aura himself had a hand in establishing the chapter. The Tomb of Aura would even prove to be a site of conflict between the Imperium and the Eldari of Craftworld Biotan. In late M41, following the events of the First Tyrannic War, a Biotan emissary would request for the Scepter of Galaxian to be removed from Aura's tomb and bestowed to the Eldari for some unknown purpose. Following the Planetary Governor's repeated refusal to acquiesce, the Emissary would be executed after threatening to unleash the fury of the Biotan Sword Host upon Comrath, prompting the Governor to request aid from the Adeptus Astartes in anticipation of the inevitable Xenos Assault. The Ultramarines, led by Chapter Master Marnius Kalgar, would come to Comrath's defence, and would successfully repel the Eldari, with Kalgar even slaying an Avatar of Cain in single combat. Having thwarted the Xenos' plans, and believing that Comrath was no longer secure enough to house such an important relic, Kalgar would transport the Scepter of Galaxian to the Ultramarines' homeworld of Macrag, where it resides to this day within the Fortress of Hera. While Imperial forces had claimed a decisive victory against the Eldari, the fact that the Sons of Aura were notably absent during this particular conflict is in itself rather perplexing, given how highly the chapter is said to venerate Aura. This has resulted in a number of detractors calling the genetic heritage of both the Sons of Aura chapter, as well as Aura himself, into question. This is partly due to the fact that Imperial records have extensively documented the early years and subsequent rise to prominence of many Astartes that would go on to establish their own successor chapters, such as Lucretius Corvo of the Nova Marines, Arius Cordos of the Black Consuls, and Obadai of the Scythes of the Emperor. Aura, by contrast, lacks this extensive documentation, as the only detailed information regarding him appears to exist solely within the historical archives of the Sons of Aura and, to a lesser extent, those of the Ultramarines. In addition, it is worth remembering that a number of Space Marine chapters were officially documented within Imperial records as being descended from the Ultramarines, only for such information to later be revealed as erroneous. The most notable example in this regard is shown with the Carmine Blades chapter, who had come to discover that, despite believing themselves to be Ultramarine descendants, they were in fact truly derived from Blood Angel's genetic stock. While it still remains uncertain as to whether or not Aura himself founded the Sons of Aura chapter, or was merely posthumously adopted as the chapter's spiritual figurehead out of respect, if Aura had indeed played a part in the chapter's creation, then there is a chance, albeit an incredibly small one, that the chapter, or at the very least, Aura himself, can trace their lineage back to one of the other Space Marine Legions. 
During the course of the Horus Heresy, a small number of warriors from across the Traitor Legions would choose to defy their Primarchs by instead remaining loyal to the Emperor instead of siding with the treasonous Warmaster, Horus Lupercal. Some of these warriors would prove to be so stalwart and unwavering in their loyalty to the Imperium that they would even be accepted as honorary members of the Legions that they battled alongside. One such example is shown with a loyalist Night Lord, Kasati Nuon, who after defying his traitorous brothers would fight alongside and serve as an honorary member of the Raven Guard. Another example is shown with the Loyalist Thousand son, Revia Lavada, who would come to be accepted as an honorary member of the White Scars. With this in mind, it is theoretically possible that Aura had himself originated from one of the Traitor Legions, before eventually being declared as an honorary member of the Ultramarines. If this were indeed the case, then it would stand to reason that the name Aura may have been an alias that had been adopted by the warrior in order to hide his true identity. Assuming that Aura was indeed a loyalist from one of the traitor legions, is there a way to determine from which legion in particular he could have originated from? A potential clue in this regard may be found within the chapter iconography borne by the Sons of Aura, an Omega. While this choice of sigil could be seen as a simple inverting of the Ultima symbol displayed by the Ultramarines, which wouldn't be entirely out of character for a supposed Ultramarine successor chapter, the Omega symbol in particular has incredibly strong links to one of the Traitor Legions, the Alpha Legion. Like the other Traitor Legions, Loyalist elements from the Alpha Legion were known to exist, although these warriors were few and far between. It is also well documented that Alpha Legion forces were present upon Macrag during the course of Imperium Secundus, as a number of Alpha Legionnaires would attempt to assassinate the Primarch Rebute Gilliman after disguising themselves as survivors from the war zone on Kalf. The Alpha Legion were also documented as having infiltrated many of the other Space Marine Legions, both Loyalist and Traitor alike. Following the events of the Istvan V drop site massacre, a small cadre of Alpha Legionnaires would infiltrate the ranks of the Raven Guard, before eventually discovering and sabotaging the Raven Guard's Raptor project. Another member of the Alpha Legion would insert themselves into the command structure of the World Eaters, disguising themselves as a captain named Alphix Cordasis. With this talent for infiltration in mind, in conjunction with the symbol for Omega serving as, for lack of a better term, the opposite of Alpha, with Alpha meaning beginning and Omega meaning end, then it is theoretically possible for a Loyalist member of the Alpha Legion to have infiltrated the ranks of the Ultramarines in order to strike back against his traitorous kin without fear of being singled out as a deserter. Not only this, but there is a chance, albeit an incredibly slim one, that Aura could have been none other than Omegon. The Alpha Legion were unique amongst the Legionnaire Astartes for the fact that the Legion was led by two Primarchs as opposed to one, the twin brothers Alpharius and Omegon, who were known conjointly, appropriately enough, as Alpharius Omegon. During the course of the Horus Heresy, the Alpha Legion would side with Horus and the other Traitor Legions after an ancient Xenos organization known as the Cabal informed Alpharius and Omegon of a prophecy which stated that, should Horus win the war, then the powers of Chaos will be effectively nullified, bringing peace and stability to the galaxy, though at the cost of humanity's extinction. However, should the Emperor prove victorious, then this would result in the eventual stagnation and decay of the Imperium, with the ruinous powers continuing to grow in power until they claim dominion over the entire galaxy. Despite his legion willingly fighting alongside Horus in order to bring about the ultimate end of Chaos itself, Omegon would, over time, begin experiencing ever-increasing doubt over the course of action that his brother and, by extension, their legion were taking. This would even result in Omegon beginning to actively sabotage the plots and schemes concocted by his twin, and should Alpharius' plans be successfully foiled, Omegon would simply place the blame for such actions upon their foes. One such example of this deceitful behaviour is documented within the novella The Serpent Beneath, with the destruction of the Denebre Station. 
This station, which had been gifted to the Alpha Legion by the Cabal, was capable of manipulating the warp in order to jam interstellar communications and in doing so, keep the, at the time, unaligned White Scars Legion contained within the Chondak system and unaware of Horus's rebellion. However, Omegon would devise a plan to destroy the Tenebre station under the pretext of rooting out a security breach, which resulted in vital intelligence being leaked to Loyalist forces. To this end, Omegon would utilise the talents of Sigma Squad to destroy the station by plunging it into the heart of a star. Shortly after this, Omegon would lie to Alpharius, who by this point remained unaware of the station's destruction by stating that his investigations into said security breach had gone cold and were likely to remain unresolved. While the security breach was, in truth, a falsehood created by Omegon, Alpharius, ignorant of his brother's deception, would suspect that Malkador or the Dark Angels had been involved in some way. Omegon would then retire to his private chambers in order to admire a secret, secondary set of power armour that was described as both plain and unadorned. The Primarch would then begin to contemplate about the future as he uttered the following quote. Let him see the fallen fruit, sitting warm and inviting in the afternoon sun, and let me be the serpent beneath, hidden and waiting to strike. Because of the ever-increasing doubts that Omegon would experience over time, this would suggest that, at some point, Omegon would defect from the Heresian forces in order to join up with the Loyalists, or at the very least, abandon the traitor course and go effectively rogue. This latter possibility is even hinted at within the novel Slave to Darkness, as when the traitor Primarchs assembled upon the world of Ulanor before making their final push towards Terra, Umagon, who by this point had assumed his twin's identity, following Alpharius' death at the hands of the Imperial Fist's Primarch, Rogal Dawn, would appear to retire from the war altogether, resulting in the Alpha Legion taking no part in the Battle for Beta Garmin or the subsequent Siege of Terra. However, following the culmination of the Heresy, Umagon was rumoured to have been killed by Rabute Gilliman upon the world of Escrador. Despite this, it remains unclear to this day as to whether or not Omegon had been truly slain by Gilliman, or if it had been another member of the Legion that had assumed the identity of Alpharius, as the warriors of the Alpha Legion are known to regularly conceal their identity by claiming that they are themselves Alpharius, due to Alpharius and Omegon being the smallest of the Primarchs, allowing them to effortlessly blend in with their gene sons, who were also noted to be larger than the average Space Marine. After all, Alpharius, or rather Omegon, was rumoured to have been spotted and subsequently slain multiple times over the millennia, leaving it nigh impossible to accurately verify if Omegon had indeed perished or not. With all these factors in mind, it's possible that Omegon could have become so disenfranchised with the Heresian cause that he decided to infiltrate the ranks of the Ultramarines, possibly as they made their way into the Soul System to reinforce Terra and adopted the identity of Aura before swiftly rising through the ranks, thanks to his incredible skill at arms and tactical acumen, before reaching the rank of Captain, only to ultimately fall in battle several years later. Perhaps the original Sons of Aura were formed by Loyalist elements from the Alpha Legion that had chosen to follow Omegon on his path to redemption, infiltrating the Ultramarines along with their gene father. This in turn could explain not only why the chapter initially venerated Aura to such a degree due to honouring their secret gene father, but also as to why most of the chapter's records have since become lost, if they ever officially existed at all, in addition to why the Sons of Aura adopted the Omega as their sigil, as a way to honour their founder, Omegon. While the very notion of Omegon secretly defecting to the Loyalists and founding his own successor chapter derived from Alpha Legion genetic stock is certainly an intriguing one, this hypothesis is not without its flaws. The first of which is that the Sons of Aura are far from the only Space Marine chapter to utilise an Omega as part of their chapter iconography, as the Omega Marines for example also prominently feature the Omega as part of their heraldry. 
Secondly, even if Aura himself was originally from one of the traitor legions, this does not rule out the possibility of the Sons of Aura themselves being a true Ultramarine successor chapter. As mentioned earlier, it remains unclear if Aura had a hand in founding the Sons of Aura, or if the chapter was established long after his death, with Aura only serving as a figure of reverence as opposed to being, for want of a better term, the father of the chapter. And finally, given the frequency with how certain records are lost or expunged from Imperial records as a result of exposure to a scrap code virus or simple clerical error, then it is still certainly possible that Aura was indeed an ancient hero of the Ultramarines, although one whose history of service has, unfortunately, been lost to the annals of time. Until any hard evidence is brought forth that states the contrary, Aura will continue to be revered as one of the Ultramarines' greatest heroes. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.